Dr. Alexander Mirescu, thanks very much indeed for joining us. First of all, since these SDGs were set up, have you seen any change in your connection with the world of business in terms of businesses uh, starting to or even getting underway adopting them? In the last approximately six years uh, since the launch of the SDGs in 2015, we've seen some really big paradigm shifts in how the private sector is engaging in the sustainable development goals and also on the other hand how the SDGs engage the private sector and that has caused really some very observable and positive shifts in how the two engage one another. So more important than ever though for businesses to put the SDGs at the forefront of their sustainability strategies. The SDGs give in return to businesses a orientation for their business plans. So if we look at SDG 11, which looks at uh, sustainable and resilient cities, that is a nothing more than a strategy for how to plan cities for the future. And that clearly will entail how we deal with something as basic as, you know, building real estate and housing. How do we engage with local actors? What are the responsibility of mayors and city councillors? And for that to happen, then we have to engage with urban planners. We have to look at green infrastructure. We have to look at sustainable mobility, all sorts of new technologies that if you think now we're in 2021, 2015, certainly if we take those six years in between, you can see that, you know, we've seen an explosion of cities that you know, have done something as basic as bike sharing. Uh, we've seen an explosion of cities that now realize that stormwater management and flood mitigation are going to be the key to the future of their economic vibrance. And so ultimately, the SDGs have this like reinforcing effect of inviting business, and then business has this ability to benefit from the SDGs, seeing it as a, as a plan or an orientation for their, for their business strategies. And the other massive uh, paradigm shift we've seen in the last six years is we have businesses that are completely based on what we call triple bottom line or ESG business models. Those are environmental, social and governmentally um, designed companies. We have companies that uh, understand that corporate social responsibilities, CSR business models are good business. This is how you attract better business. And if you're offering a solution to urban resilience or to the climate crisis, uh, that only makes you more attractive versus those companies who haven't gotten on board. So we're seeing that progress. We're seeing businesses adjust their, their practices to incorporate these kind of goals. The ones that are at the top of your list, uh, the one number 11, that is to, all to do with cities, of course, which is your area of expertise, and also number nine, infrastructure and uh, innovation. Um, what more can businesses do, in your view, on those two goals? It is on the heads of businesses, um, specifically the sustainability and the, and the climate resilience private sector, to try to fill that knowledge gap or work with those companies that are designed to fill knowledge gaps. We specifically identify and work with those companies that want to get into this market. They want to get into the climate resilience market. They don't quite know how, um, or they don't know really what the first access point is. And so businesses are really behooved to have a whole multiplicity of partnerships, both in the public sector, but across other actors in the private sector, through partnerships, through collaborations. And ultimately, we all want to just reduce this knowledge gap and almost create the behavioral model of the public sector to be as agile and as flexible as the, the private sector. And SDG 9 specifically outlines that it's asking for better innovations. It's asking for new technologies for infrastructure. And if we look at where cities are going to be in the next 5, 10, 15, 25 years by 2045, then clearly infrastructure is a massive, massive question. How are we going to move more people? How are we going to house people? How are we going to build these cities that will be designed for risk? And that will be sustainably conceptualized and, and implemented. Very briefly then, Alexander, are you optimistic? I am very hopeful. The companies that I work with or the companies that seek out our services at Resilient City give me a tremendous amount of optimism that they are forward looking. They want to partner with uh, companies like mine. 
and they want to be in this very lucrative market. So I'm very hopeful that we're going to come out of this pandemic phase and we're going to have a, a really an interesting, interesting, vibrant, innovative uh, and refreshing business market as we go um, later in the century into 2045. Alexander Marescu, thanks very much indeed for talking to us again. Thank you, Andrew. Always a pleasure.